Uh, okay, so um, I'm talking from New Caledonia tonight, but I'll be talking of uh, French Polynesia and especially the, um, the Society Islands tonight. So in the Society Islands, uh, ancient Tahiti and uh, the Thing Islands, ancient Polynesians had progressively implemented uh, a socio-political system of powerful chiefdoms. Uh, ruling over territories varying in size from a valley to a whole island. Chiefs, called the Ari'i, were sacred as direct descendants of the god and were the primary intercessors between the latter and the rest of humanity. Cults and ceremonies took place on open streets known as Marae, where offerings and display of effigy helped initiate the temporary visits of the gods. Coming out of the Po, the realm of the spirits and of obscurity, up to Ao, the tangible, luminous world of the living, gods would incarnate, thus transferring their mana, their primal energy, to the available receptacles, whether living or inert. Uh, chiefs and priests, statues of wood or upright stones, or placed against the altar or ahu, which you can see examples of here. In the courtyards of the Marais, rough stones were also erected, and these uprights were used as backrest stones, or ofai tuturi, or markers of social status of a particular role during ceremonies. In ceremonial stones, uprights were also put in place as tangible land markers, such as ofai utia, and struck with tapu, or as markers of limits between two spiritual worlds, such as the upright stone named Tupai Ofai in Taputapuatea, which is set within the Rayatea Island Lagoon and indicates the limit between Te Ao and Te Po, the two worlds I just mentioned. Most notably, all these stones bear functional designations with which they can be categorized. Although more logically similar, their meaning and utility differ significantly from one another. Furthermore, some of them have personal names, meaning they are individualized as powerful entities. Uprights were also used as two markers, one of the rare traditional purposes which has percolated into Christianized colonial times, a little bit of what Chris showed us a little bit earlier. Uh, finally, propitiatory stones were also used by ancient Polynesians, like the Puna Ia, used to capture fish. Most of the time, it is their natural form which has allowed them to receive a magical power through an ancient pareidolia process. Sometimes uh, something we can be found throughout the Pacific Islands and probably beyond. In New Caledonia, for instance, the diversity of the island's geological environment and the presence of many fossils has created an extreme diversification of these applications. We have fish stones, crab stones, shell stones, yam stones, banana stones, and so on, in what we locally refer to as les pierres à magie in French, because of course we speak French over here. Uh, these examples all refer to untransformed rocks. I'm coming back to French Polynesia here. However, in Polynesia, many stone effigies of anthropomorphic shape were also used, like the tiki, kizis, the moai in Rapa Nui, the coral slabs in the Tuamotu, or the ti'i in the Society Islands, and in case of the latter, often found in the vicinity of Marai, but also in gardens as fertility features. We have an example here at the bottom right. On Rayatea, the Taputapuatea Aopua ceremonial complex obtained a World Heritage listing uh, from UNESCO in 2015. It consists of a large uh, domain starting from the mountain tops in the south of Rayatea down through the valleys of the southeast coast of the island, reaching the sea in a beautiful setting, which we can see here, just opposite a sacred pass into the ocean called Te Avamoa. Uh, on the seashore plain, the ceremonial complex itself comprises four marae of large proportions. In between these main structures lie the remnants of asset constructions, uh, a big, big shrine, um, uh, an archery platform, a pei pei, uh, or housing platform. And, sec and lastly, two secondary marae also exist of very small proportions in the eastern part of the site. Now you have two circles here. Uh, circling the same thing, and that is the very tiny structure that you can see, here, and which is what we excavated in 2019. Uh, the oral traditions from Marayatea mention its name. It is also a marae. It is a marae called Turi, 
Uh, it marks a particular relationship with the king of Rayatea in the early 19th century called Tamatua II, known as Turi Ari Itefare Poutahi. Uh, the age of the structure, which we'll discuss later, this is probably an element uh, recently recomposed. Uh, in order to better understand the chronology of the site, uh, one of the recommendations of the UNESCO was uh, that archaeological work, work should be undertaken. So this is where we come in, and we started excavating the site in 2019, some, some parts of the site in 2019. And that year we focused on this little uh, marae. The structure had undergone a partial excavation in 1994. You can see the vintage pictures there. Uh, which had not, to our knowledge, led to any kind of field report, probably the archaeological testing structure was interpreted as negative or something. But the photography evidence uh, made it clear that the west part of the marae, so the left part here, uh, had been left untouched. And this is precisely where we quickly identified a rather large cyst or shrine uh, placed on a north-south axis and roughly perpendicular to the ahu, the platform, the slightly raised platform you see here. Uh, so it was in square C2 at the bottom here, where it's also circled, that eventually we were able to identify the elongated structure. Uh, the southern half was first excavated, you can see that in the top picture, uh, with no considerable findings apart from a few shells and some small animal bones currently under analysis. And then the remaining half was removed closer to the Ahu, which yielded more significant uh, results. Um, just under the Ofai Itia, so the upright base that is located at the northern tip of the cyst, was a pig jaw. Uh, on the western side were a human ilium bone, uh, closely associated with a large shell, Shikoreus ramosus, known locally as Putara. Uh, finally, at the bottom of the cyst, we found uh, a volcanic rock boulder, uh, about 27 centimeters in height, placed vertically. Uh, within the sandy filling with no particular features other than a really symmetrical shape and a deep dent on the top part, which you can see here circled in yellow. Uh, upon discovery, Anatawari Vincent and I, my co-authors tonight, uh, thought it was a stone TE. Uh, the intentional placing, the proportions, the material with the coarse grain morphic rock, its association with the ceremony uh, structure, all made it uh, plausible, but when we were able to get a proper look, it appeared that it was actually a natural boulder. Uh, it lacked any kind of human intervention on its shape, and while some TE can be sculpted in considerable details, uh, others can be very, very quickly humanized with a high degree of abstraction of the human form. But this really was not even that. So since the 29th field season, we were able to send coral fragments from the Yahoo to get uranium thorium dates at the Piazzi Mass Institute near Paris. The results were quite consistent with 675 cal BP and 640 cal BP, so approximately 1345 to 1377 Christian era. So construction phase going back to the second half of the 14th century uh, for a marae in French Polynesia is a very finding. Uh, it's not seen much, but it is. Uh, so far, these dates are among the oldest ever acquired religious structure in the, in the Society Islands, in the Leeward Islands specifically. Only Mare uh, Matiarahi on the island of Wahine is comparable for now. It's from the middle of the 15th century, so a century later than this one. Um, so, of course, these dates help secure the construction of the Mare, but of course, not necessarily the system. Uh, the Precise date of the sea's content with bone and shell samples uh, was delayed because of COVID-19, but are currently being processed. So this should allow us to link the two structures more specifically and more precisely with other. But the question will remain, though, of the cyst's original content. Uh, is it what has been covered? Is the uncovered content the remnant or substitute for the cyst's original filling? The presence of human and animal remains of a large cell, which is often associated with complex rituals, just multiple operators within the structure over time. Now, when was this ball associated with these operations? What, what purpose did it have? Uh, was the boulder always associated with the cyst, 
or only for its last ever use as a way of sealing it indefinitely. Um, is the dent present at one of its extremities an important morphological characteristic? Well, that's hard to say. Uh, could the dent be interpreted as a representation of female genitalia, like other examples exist in the Pacific? So here to the right in New Caledonia for the sake of comparison. Uh, in our case, the stone was completely within a cyst. The ground itself in the Polynesian world is Papa, a female principle representing the earth, bearing an all-powerful generative role. So a magical stone buried with it would very well need to be associated with a female nature. Or else we could compare it with other stone TE, which appear above the ground, emerging from it, ready to generate humanity, for that's, that's usually their role. They also bear fertility powers, and their shape is sometimes as much anthropomorphic as it is phallic, with a clever morphing of both representations into one. So this stone be some sort of primary primitive phallic stone used for fertility reasons, where the dent would represent a urethra, as we can see on other kinds of Polynesian objects, such as pounders, for instance. I don't know. But if so, then this raises the question of when the anthropomorphization of the ti'i took place in the society islands. Considering the age of the marae and the potential age of the cyst, is it possible that if unsculpted versions of the ti'i have existed? It brings us to one last interrogation. Uh, is it the action which embeds the power in the stone, or is the stone already selected for some properties and its power only revealed by sculpture. Thank you very much.